Hi Flosstube, welcome back to my channel if you are returning. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Cameron, I go by Cam the Stitcher here on Flosstube and on Instagram. And I'm coming at you today about cross stitch. That's pretty much it. Um, sometimes I talk about crochet, sometimes I talk about sewing, whatever crafty stuff. Um, but today it is all cross stitch. Um, I'm excited to talk. I have like so many things still to talk about and that's fine. But um, if you, <laughs> if you're not new here, you know, whatever. This is like gonna be a little bit jumbled. I don't know if I'm gonna go in like really any order. I kind of just wanna jump into it. I will say at the end of the video, I will talk about some books that I've read recently, maybe some music that I've been listening to, movies, TV, just media that I've been consuming and enjoying um, to share with you all. Um, but that will be at the end of the video after all the cross stitch. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. Um, let's get right into it, I reckon. So um, it is March something, 20. 5th, 26th today. Um, we are on the verge of Easter weekend. Um, my, I'm gonna go home for Easter, just spend some time with my family, um, and eat good food, you know, um, all that good stuff. So I'll be traveling this weekend, but I wanted to film on time. That has not happened this year yet, so <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, and yeah, so that's why I'm here. So I'm just gonna grab whatever's on top. I have lots of whips for you. I have some new starts, no finishes or FFOs today. Um, and then I have some like stitchy kindness haul, just gathering of the things, um, and some plans. For sure I have plans. So let's just get into it. Um, first I'm gonna pull out this big bag. This is a bag Alexis from Alexis underscore My Amazing World um, made for me. I have two whips in here that I need to talk about. So first, um, this I showed in my last video as a new start. This is the third day of Christmas tree by Hello from Liz Matthews. I'll pop, pop a picture up here. Me and my friend Bridget, the museum stitcher, are stitching all of these and trying to keep up a schedule of finishing one about every other month. Um, uh, we finished the second day of Christmas, um, a little into the first week of March. I think we both finished. Um, so we caught up and we're stitching the third now. So this is where I'm at from the last time I showed you. So, um, I think the last time I showed you, I literally just had that little blue chicken in there. Sorry, the light, it is so dark and stormy and rainy here in Virginia today. But I went ahead and got a little bit more progress on this. I think I'm going to bring this with me um, to stitch on for Easter weekend. But yeah, so I, that's where I'm at really. I'm stitching this on 36 count hibiscus linen by Fiber on a Whim. I'm stitching all of the trees on different colors of 36 count, mostly fiber on a whim. Um, I think I have one picture that's plus in there somewhere, but they're looking great. I'm doing the called for except for this brown that should be, it's called for in 310. I'm doing 3021. And then the snowflakes I decided to do in blue because I can, you know, that's pretty much just the end of that. So that is going well. Um, definitely not as much progress as I should have at this point, but we're, you know what, this month, the goals just really didn't, um, I didn't, I haven't reached all my goals yet and that's okay. We're, we're trying here. Um, speaking of another monthly goal that I have not hit yet, this is the vanity sampler by hello from Liz Matthews. I actually have a picture of this one. Yes, I do. Here we go. So this is the vanity sampler. Um, I'm also working on this with Bridget from the Museum Stitcher. We're trying to do about 15 to 1600 stitches a month on this. And um, so we can have it done by the end of the year. <sighs> um, I think she reached her goal this month. I have not. I'm, I think I can do it though. If I really 
concentrate. But I think I've gotten about, I want to say 800 stitches in this so far this month. So the last time I showed it to you, I had that whole top section done um, and this border right here. And so I've gone in and gone down more on the border and then started the words. And that's all I've done. I think when I pick this back up for the rest of the month, I'm gonna keep going obviously with that border color I've got already on the needle. And then I'm gonna go back up and try to do more words. I'm kind of trying to do things that I kind of don't want to do, which is border and words at the moment. I'm just not in the mood for that right now, but I'm trying to get it done. And then I will treat myself with little motifs and doodads and birds and whatnot. I'm most excited to stitch on the, um, the butterflies. And I'm like, I almost want to save those for last. Like, dare I move around and do everything else? And then in November, December, like do the little butterflies. I don't know. I'm very much looking forward to stitching those. So that is where I'm at on that. I am going to pull this out um, perhaps tonight um, and maybe a little bit tomorrow before I leave to try to get to my 1500 goal on this. The next whip I'm going to show you is my friend and I's uh, full moon whip or yeah, stitch along. Um, this is Sarah Moon and it's charted by Stitchy Box samplers. Um, this is a reproduction sampler. I'm doing my own color conversion. I'm not gonna take this out of the hoop because I don't feel like it, but this is where I'm at. I think the last time I showed it to you, I had started this squirrel. Um, so this time I did a little bit more of the fill in on the squirrel and then I finished out this uh, around it. I stitched this little guy up here, this little Z, and then started this and this motif. I kind of jumped around. I don't know. <laughs> I cannot, like, I like to see what colors I'm going to work with next. And so then I end up jumping around and not finishing, you know what I mean? Not finishing the motif I'm currently working in. I'm, I'm horrible at that, but I am having fun regardless. So it's fine. Yeah, I'm stitching this on a 40 count Wild Mint Atomic Ranch Linen with one strand of DMC. I'm doing my own conversion. That is on Instagram if you're interested. I also totally forgot to tell you what I'm stitching my vanity sampler on. That is on 36 count Brown Sugar by Fiber on a Whim. And it is stitched with my own conversion. Um, I call it like my Victorian goth conversion for the vanity sampler. And that is also on my Instagram. If you have trouble finding it, I think it's, I have a pinned like story um, highlight that you can go to my profile and it is on there and you can screenshot it um, or whatever. Um, but if you're having trouble finding it, just DM me and I will totally send it to you. Or if you do not have Instagram, email me at camthestitcher at gmail.com. The next thing I want to show you is a new start. Um, I started this like I think right after I filmed my last video and I'm this is a new chart, a new designer. This is by Boomerang Stitches. Um, they are here on Floss Tube as well, which I have some Floss Tube shout outs a little bit today, which actually let me just do them now. So Boomerang Stitches is one half of the Hathaway Stitchers here on Floss Tube. Um, I saw this, They I saw it posted on Instagram and I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. And I purchased it immediately from Etsy. They have an Etsy shop. They have two patterns in there as of right now. This is the one I got. I got My Flowers is what the chart is called. And I just pulled from Stash. It calls for DMC. It's a very simple, like very pretty chart. It reminds me of Pyrex type of design, um, which I really love. I kept true pretty much to the colors that... Um, boomerang stitches chose but I just chose some like over dyed stash and, and whatnot but yeah the Hathaway stitchers are very fun to watch on YouTube the other two floss tubers I wanted to shout out today too first of all my friend wicked cat um, wicked cat stitch here on floss tube posted their first video I mentioned them in my last video um, they had sent me some we did a fabric swap 
And I wanted to let you know that that first video has been posted and it was a hoot and a holler. And I just, I encourage you guys to go check her out. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's fun to put that first floss tube out, but it's also like a little daunting. So, <laughs> you know, go check her out, give her a like, give her a comment. Um, and then I also want to encourage you guys to go check out Thread Gremlins here on floss tube. They also have an Instagram. It's two buddies talking about stitching um and i literally i posted on my instagram story i shared their video um their first video they just i just saw that they posted their second video i think today or maybe last night uh, i can't wait to go watch it i just again a hoot and a holler like i just was laughing with them like they were so fun to watch and they stitch on so many different types of things, which is like my favorite type of floss tuber to watch. I just, I love seeing different things. I stitch on so many different things. I love samplers. I love like Lola Crow and um, the Witchy Stitcher and Night Spirit Studio, but I also love full coverage and like more dainty things. You know, I like love all the things. So I really encourage you to go watch them, go check them out. Go check out their second video too. I'm excited to watch that later. But anyways, back to boomerang stitches, my flowers. Okay, here is my start. And this is just so precious. I love it. So I pulled all color and cottons just from my stash. These are the colors. The only thing that is not true to the called for is this brown that I chose for this section. It calls for like a dark grayish green. And I just felt with the palette that I pulled, I kind of liked that brown um, a little bit more with it. It's hard to get the colors to show in this lighting, but I'm trying. And it's stitched on a 40 count. It's an Atomic Ranch linen and it was called like limited edition so I don't know if that's the name of it or if it was just a limited edition atomic ranch that doesn't have a name but it's this like really light meadowy green it's very pretty I really like it I wanted something really neutral for this but I thought this green worked really well um I was talking to uh, speaking of Megan the Seattle stitcher just posted her first video um back from having a baby so um that is exciting but I was talking to her and <laughs> we realized like when we think of like a color but that pulls neutral for us I go to green and she goes to blue and it was just we were like talking about fabrics and things but um to me this is like the perfect neutral that's not a neutral if that makes sense um but anyways, I love how this turned out. I'm done with this one. Um, I just need to go back up and do this part and then I'm gonna move the hoop. But this has been such a delight to stitch on, for real. Like, I, I love it. So yeah, go check out Boomerang Stitches on Etsy um, and on Instagram. The other pattern that they put out was a like Jaws shark themed um, sampler type of thing and it's, very cool. Okay, the next whip I'm going to show you, this was one of my whip go goals for the month of March that I did reach my goal on. So this is a full coverage. This is by, it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs and the artwork is by Bob Doucette. And this is one of my favorite. I just love it so much. Um, I got over 2000 stitches done on this. Now, granted, they're 10 stitches, but whatever. Um, that was my goal and I got it done. And this is where I'm at. It looks like a mess. I know I am transitioning out of using Royal Rose on this and I'm just doing kind of like cross country, kind of just picking up a color and going as far as I can essentially. But you're starting to see like, this is a bubble you can see with like a little bubble behind it you can kind of start seeing. That's the thing about Royal Rose. It was it was cool because you started to see like the picture very clear like as you finish out a column. But with this method, you kind of see like a ghost of a thing um, before it's actually done. I don't know. I do miss Royal Rose, but 
you can see it's it created lines and that could just be my tension it could be the way I was doing it but I had to stop so it works for some people but for me this it just I can't I couldn't deal with that so <laughs> anyways that is done and complete okay my next whip this was the second pick a whip pull from my friend Marjorie here on floss tube Marjorie made um, she pulls a prompt every first and every 15th of each month and it's called pick a whip and you can you can make your own goals mine is really to just try to get as many stitches as I can like one to two days I try to aim for about 500 stitches um, and the prompt was a piece with fruit or food on the um, pattern and I actually picked Birdman Cometh by Little Robin Designs. This is one of my favorite pieces. I, I'm i obsessed. I started this last year with my friend Michaela over at Cinematic Stitches here on Floss Tube, And I picked this because it has like a pomegranate in the middle and I was like, that counts. The last time that I worked on this, I was bedridden at the beach with severe sciatica situation happening. This was July of last year. And I had made a mistake somewhere where I had started and I could not for the life of me figure out what the mistake was. So I couldn't even frog or fudge. Like I just couldn't figure out what I did wrong. So I used this opportunity to challenge myself to figure it out, whether that was to frog or fudge. And I figured it out. So let me show you my progress. I'm very excited. This is stitched on 20 count Ada um, fiber on a whim lipstick is the colorway and that is where I'm at I posted this on Instagram I just love I just love this so what I ended up doing was I had to frog out ev like I had had the front part of the horse pretty much and this little bird guy or lady um I had them all stitched up and I had to rip it all out because I was off by one stitch like this you know vertically or whatever and so I ended up starting from here and stitching this first and then I counted from this and was able to restart the horse and got a lot done I'm trying to see if you can try to make this lighting better but yeah I love this I love this lipstick fabric I did have to switch out my red that I had I think I'm using like a mixture of stash color and cotton and a mixture of DMC and I pulled um I had to pull a deeper red because the red I had literally matched the fabric so I love it so much and now that I fixed the problem I can just pull this out whenever and it just reminded me how much I love stitching on 20 count Ada Ugh. like I really love it and so I think as a treat myself I'm supposed to be possibly getting a promotion raise situation in July of this year we'll see um and if I do, I'm going to treat myself and rejoin a Fabric of the Month Club for some 20 count Ada because I just love it so much. The next whip I will show you is our round robin. This is the last round robin that I will have in my hands before I get mine back. Um, we are stitching Quaker Gardens by Hello from Liz Matthews. We all picked our own colors, our own fabric, etc. Um, and I will have the list of ladies below. This is um, Maddie's from Kitty Stitch on Instagram. She does not have a floss tube, but she is on Instagram and she's fabulous. She actually did my pink on pink um, conversion that I did um, or am doing for my Beatrix Potter um, sampler. And it is, it makes me want to pull out my Beatrix Potter. But this is gorgeous. I am not finished with my port. I'm in the middle of my portion. But this is the last one I will have after I'm done with my Quaker piece. And then I have like a few things down here. And then this um, border to bring over. I will be done. I will send this to Maddie. She will have her almost finished piece back in her hands and then Marjorie will be sending mine to me very soon and I would like to finish mine in April 
we'll see. Although, here's the tea. I don't have enough floss for mine. When I get mine back, I don't have enough floss. I did not leave myself. I did the math wrong. I don't know. Anyways, the point being, there's a huge house that's going to go here. I don't even know if I have enough floss to do the house. So I have another pink silk that I think I'm just going to do with instead. <laughs> but I'm contemplating doing the house and finishing that out, finishing out this border on mine all the way over and then calling that a finish and not doing, there's a bottom border here that is beautiful and it probably would make the piece easier to frame, I'm sure, size-wise. I don't know, we'll see. I might, I don't know. I'm just mad at myself that I did not pick a floss that I had enough of. It's okay, it's a Mohs Sale um, cranberry bread silk, so she doesn't really do re-dyes, so I'm not, I just know that I, I'm not gonna be able to find <laughs> um more floss that easily so anyways but this looks great I'm loving the pink on pink this is 40 count um peony by fiber and a whim with dinky dye silk and the colorway pink tourmaline and this is something that I discovered worked well and I um I'm stitching my Beatrix Potter with these colors and it's gorgeous and it's everything and I love it. And I'm so happy Maddie picked this and I was so happy I got to stitch on this. So yeah. So this I think is the last, this is a new start um, that I'm very excited about. And then we'll get into kind of like plans, um, haul, stitchy kindness, just all in the same, the same way. So this is, I joined Lindy Stitches um, Endangered Species Club this year. And this was the first pattern that came out that I received um, a couple months ago. And I had not started it yet because I'm trying to do low starts, but whatever, life is short and we all turn to dust after this, so who cares? So I ended up deciding to start this. And I'm so glad I did because holy cow, I went ham on this. Like I started it and I could not stop. I simply could not stop. I love this chart literally so much. I am stitching it on the called for 32 count Zweigart linen in the colorway Silver Moon. Stitching it with two strands of DMC. Y'all, I got so far. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I usually like I'll start something and then, then I put it away and it just has that little bit done for a while. But I was not messing around with this one. So as you can see, I have the whole top border situation done. I have almost all the trees done. I have all of the black spots on the leopard done. So I did all of those first and then I started this light fill in for his like chin and his belly. You can see there. And then I started this um, fill in for this. I'm so excited. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna finish this, all of this filling, get down to the bottom and then, oh, it's only here, yeah. And then finish this bottom border situation. I'm gonna go back up, do all the filling for the center of his face, all the white like belly stitching. And then the, I'm gonna do the rock that he's sitting on or the log that he's sitting on with that variegated floss. I'm gonna do that. Um, and she says in the instructions that she stitched it one stitch at a time diagonally, which I'm so glad that I read, read the directions because I didn't know how she did that. So that's cool. So I'm going to do that. And then the absolute last thing I'll do is the actual fill in of this variegated floss on the leopard. I'm going to save that for last. But I'm obsessed and I'm so glad that I started it and I'm so glad that I didn't hesitate on start like you know what I mean like whatever it started and not only is it started it's got so much progress and I love stitching on this so much and I can't wait anyways point being I also got the second endangered um species club shipment the other day and this is the second pattern it's this gorgeous African savanna elephant. It is, I love it. I love these things. That's done with a satin stitch and she just posted a tutorial, like helpful tips on that, which is great because I've never done a satin stitch. So I'm very excited and I just am obsessed. And what I've decided 
is this piece is exactly big enough. It's a fat quarter. It's exactly big enough for me to have like an not an inch or half of an inch between them and I'm gonna do them all on one piece all six of them I love it I love it I just love how bold I just love how bold this looks um the only thing I did change out that you can probably notice is I switched out this like um, coral color for this hot pink and then I switched out the yellow for this like green lime green because that's just me you know what I mean for this one I think I'm gonna keep this yellow obviously for the stars and the moon I'm gonna continue to swap out this color for the hot pink but I think I'm gonna keep everything the same I do like this like lighter orangey color I think that with the hot pink will look really cute so I just, I wanted to just make them a little bit more Lisa Frank. And I think I accomplished that. Just a little hint of, of hot pink in there. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of haul. It's very small amount. And then we're gonna get into stitchy plans. So the first thing I wanna show you, I did make an order with Top Knot Stitcher. Um, and I just got some over dyed threads that I needed. And then I also got this um, fat quarter of fox and rabbit linen that is new from market this is called inca and this is a 40 count and the lighting's not going to do it justice this literally looks like butter it is so gorgeous the modeling it's very similar to me to flannel flower by fox and rabbit but like warm like a yellowy a beautiful like buttermilk tone with like a pinky brown modeling in it I love it so I'm so glad I grabbed a cut of that I don't know what I'm gonna use it for it's gonna be one of those fabrics I probably stash away and save for a rainy day and who knows what that rainy day looks like but I'm excited I got a piece and then I also picked up the new classic color work oh hold on let me take it out it came with a freebie chart which is really nice from little house needleworks this is the the freebie chart it came with and here are the three colors i don't know how to best show this but <laughs> so this is weather vane london fog and misty mauve they're very moody colors. They're very pretty. So yeah, excited I got those. I needed one of them for one of the new charts I got. So I was like, well, I might as well just get the pack. You know what I mean? Um, then what else did I get? I got, this is Stitchy Kindness, but I'm going to show it now. One of my followers sent me, they had gotten an extra copy of this on accident or something like that. Um, and they wanted to send it to me. This is a Joan Elliott Designs chart called Celestial Symphony. And it's very gorgeous. I really like it. I'm imagining, I don't, I'm not a blue person. So I want to put this on like a purpley green pink situation because I love the fairies and like the mushrooms. I love these owls. I just, I love, this is very whimsical to me and I love that. I think I would also rechart the sun to have like a little like whimsy goth sun face in it. So yeah, I love this. So thank you so much for sending this to me. Um, that was a delightful thing to receive in the mail. And then some other things I got, I purchased some floss from Dying for Sass. They were having a sale on their Etsy shop to clear out their stock. Um, they're gonna dye some new colors. So I grabbed a couple of things. The first thing I grabbed was a 25 yard skein of this black. It's called Shades of Black and it's slightly variegated. It's like a smoky blue based um, black. I figured this would just be good to have to throw in um, for conversions and whatnot. And then I got this one. This is like a really dark, beautiful teal color. And this reminds me of my partner. This is like kind of his favorite color. Um, and this is called Edgar. 
and I think um, D's 20 Stitches and Uncanny Kari last spring fling, they had that um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart with the dragon like skull situation. And I believe that it's coming out soon um, as a PDF. And I'm thinking I'm going to purchase that. And then I'm going to do like this floss on this fabric by Be Stitch Me. This is called Boneyard. And this is giving very much like Skyrim, video game, Lord of the Rings type of vibe. And that's like so my partner. I love Skyrim too. That's like my favorite video game of all time. So I think that's a plan. I don't know when I'm going to start it. Um, I mean, the, the PDF hasn't even come out yet for purchase, but when it does, that will be in my cart and ready to go. Um, and then I got some 10 yard skeins of these colors. So this is called Bat Tears and it's definitely more purple in person. This is almost coming off black, but it is a beautiful like Halloween purple. And then I got Red Hot which is very like pinkish red. Love that. I got this really fun, it's called rave.in. So like early 90s vibes. Oh, I love that. I don't know what I'm gonna stitch with this, but I had to have it. And then I got lovey dovey, which I actually got this for Birdman Cometh because it calls for a week style works that's very similar to this. And I was having a hard time finding a substitute for that. And this actually worked out perfectly. So very excited about that. Um, and then I also got some Mosail silk that I haven't purchased from them in a while. So I treated myself um, and I got a few colors. So I got this really dark purple. Again, it's coming off black, but <laughs> I promise it's purple. Um, I got this really beautiful rusty red. I got this blue, which is great. Like this is just a great sampler blue to have. I got two skeins of this blue, like sea foamy color. I got this purple, which is much more vibrant, very pretty. And then I got two skeins of this teal color that again, I just, I'm into the teals. There's something like I can't do blue for some reason, but like a teal I'm here for. I don't know. I'm not allergic to blue, but like, I just don't go for it. My eye doesn't draw there. Now I do want to say I have purchased from Sale um, in the past. And I've talked about them on my channel quite a bit and I love their silk. Um, I had not purchased from them in a, several months just because I was like trying to, you know, I don't need the floss all the time, right? Um, trying to budget, whatnot. But um, I got these in the mail and I don't know if she's changed the base silk or if these just were stored differently or something. But the silk does look a little bit different than the old skeins of Mosail that I have. Um... I don't know, like, again, like, I tried to look back and see if she had said anything. I don't think she has changed the base. Or at least she hasn't said anything, but it just looks a little different. Um, the skein almost looks like a little, it's harder to see, like, each strand. Like, it almost looks a little smushed in a way. But I'm not sure. So just be warned. Um, I haven't, like, stitched with this, obviously, yet. I'm sure it stitches just fine. You can see, like... The strand pulls out just fine. Um, but I don't know. It just looks different. So just, you know, I speak about them. I just want to make cle like that clear if you were thinking about buying from them or you hadn't bought from them in a while. Um, I'm going to have to test it. I'm going to have to stitch with it and see how I feel. But um, I did just want to like be very transparent about that, that I noticed there is a difference for some reason in this batch. But yeah, so that was pretty much all the haul, I think. Almost, pretty much. So, well, this is part of haul, but let's talk about plans. Um, there are a couple things in April that I want to do. I want to stitch, I want to reach goals, and I want to start. The first um, thing that I want to talk about is my friend here on Flosstube, Handmade by Sarah W., 
she is doing a stitch along um, and she's doing this uh, in collab with her friend from pa uh, Paper Crane Yarns. That is a shop in Alabama. They um, dye, also a, a yarn dyer, obviously. Um, but they're starting to kind of get into the cross-stitch world. And so I made a pre-order on their website. You can, I believe, pre-orders are still open. You can go to Paper Crane Yarns, um, their website, their Instagram. And you can pre-order this... Um, market release this was a market release by I want to say oh my gosh I can't remember the designer's name I'll put it down here but it's called like botanical study um they're using the hashtag botanical study sal this is what the chart looks like and it comes in they stitched it on a dark fabric and a light fabric of course my eyes drawn to the darker fabric I love this they're gonna start stitching this on April 13th and I'm joining in. So I made my pre-order for the um, the chart. And again, this is a new chart from Market. So um, I encourage you to go and support um, Paper Crane Yarns and purchase that through them. But I've gone ahead, I'm pulling from Stash for this. And I'm excited. I don't have a dark smoky fabric like that that pulls blue but I do have this fabric that my friend Megan gave me a while ago and it's this dark green this is by a dyer that I don't like buy from anymore but um she had a cut of this and she didn't know what she wanted to use it for so she sent it to me and it is I think this is the perfect like tone for it um like, I think it's the perfect darkness, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I went through my stash and I actually had a couple of the called for. So I did pull those and then I pulled um, some color and cotton. So these are some of the called for that I don't really purchase anymore. But I pulled some color and cottons to go with it. So I've got that green I've got a slightly lighter green and we'll see how these show up on the fabric of course I will make adjustments if needed not a problem this ended up being perfect I love this color so much and then I have this isn't like finalized but I think I like where this is going so I want to keep true to the colors but I'm just changing this uh the fabric color that I'm going for but yeah so the, I will be joining them on April 13th and starting that. I have it in my new, this is part of haul, Black Cat X Stitchery bag. I joined their quarterly club. I saw it on Michelle Bendy's channel and I was like, ugh. And she had a spot open and she had an extra of the March club. And so I paid that invoice so quick and she sent it to me and it's gorgeous. It comes with the thread bed, which is very, very cute. You can see what that looks like. And then it also comes with a very cute covered button needle minder, which I love. So I am keeping that new start all kitted up in here. And I'm excited. My other plan, planned start, I should say, this is for April 12th. I've gotten a lot of comments and DMs asking me if I'm joining because I forgot to say it, I guess, in my last couple of videos. Don't worry, y'all. I'm doing it. I'm talking about the Lola Crow Cross Stitch Deadly Aquarium Stitch Along. Yes. As you can see behind me, if you are familiar, this is the Haunted Library Stitch Along by Lola Crow. This was her first stitch along. I participated, I finished the frame, I finished all the parts on time, and I finished it on time and had it framed pretty shortly thereafter. This is the um, most recent one from last year. This is the Greenhouse of Oddities stitch along that I also kept up with every week. And <laughs> it's like, I don't know how I did that, but I did. Um, and I finished it on time and I framed it pretty recently-ish at the end of last year. So yes, I am doing the Deadly Aquarium style because I cannot resist. I've already finished the two that she's done and both of them came out like they are masterpieces. Like they not, and I'm not talking about my own stitching. 
I'm talking about just the design. Like, I love the way she portions out each part. I love the details, all the colors. I mean, I'm just obsessed. I'm so proud of this finish. I need to get it up on my wall. It's just sitting behind me on the couch. But um, it's just, I mean, look at, are you kidding? And this is my favorite little guy. This is Mort. Um, I think I said in my first video where I had uh, had him stitched up, he, he is, you know, worried about his 401k, worried about that retirement. And he still is. I guess this is his retirement. You know, it's no longer, it's not a whip. It's, it's a fully finished item and he's living his best life right there. Anyways, so all of that to say, I am starting the Deadly Aquarium style. Don't you worry. I have already picked out um, and ordered a piece of fabric. This is my first cut of Mystic Fabrics um, linen. This is a 32 count in the colorway Dreamy. Ooh. So I am stitching Deadly Aquarium on this. This is definitely more vibrant and darker than the called for. That being said, I really like this and I think it's gonna work. Um, I went darker on this one too and I really liked the way it worked out. Um, the black popped enough on it and everything. Um, even like this gray color that you can see in the frame, like you can still see that enough, right? Like the trees still pop, everything like that. This one I am a little bit more worried about, but I, I'm just so committed to doing it on this. It's gorgeous. I did pull the flosses for it. So it calls for all DMC and it's one hefty ring of DMC. I need to pick a different, put it on a bigger ring, but anyways, <laughs> it's just a lot of different colors. And again, like if you have done one of her stitch alongs before, or like if, I mean, just looking at the ones behind me, these colors, they really make or break. I think this is going to work. I really do. I'm not too worried about, I don't think really any colors not showing up. Because again, I'm doing it with two strands on 32 count. The stitches will be nice and bulky. I think everything's going to work out. So the frame comes out April 12th. I'm going to start it as soon as it drops in my inbox. And the real trick, here's here's the real trick with a Lola Crow stitch along. You have got to get that frame done before the first part comes out. She gives you an entire month to, to stitch the frame. And that is what I did with both of these. Both of these, the frame was completely done before the first part came out. And I think that is the only reason I was able to keep up. Some people have done it where they kind of do a little bit of the frame as they go. Um, that can work too. I know my friend Frizzy Lizzie Stitches, she will be joining me on this as well. Um, and she, her haunted library is done, but she still has uh, Greenhouse of Oddities as a whip. Um, and it's just that frame is a beast. When it comes out, it's a beast. And yeah, we just, I'll try to keep everyone motivated. <laughs> To get through it and on the haunted library frame I had messed it up so bad on one part that I had to frog out all of my 310 stitches I don't know how I did that anyways point being I'm very excited to start this don't you worry I will be um doing updates on here I will try to do what I used to do on my Instagram which is I did a, like a weekly almost weekly update on my Lola Crow stitch along and I will like take pictures of each part that I've completed and hopefully the finish when, you know, that comes out and everything. So I'm so excited. I, I know, like, I just knew, like, even when I was doing a low start year, I even said in like that video, I was like, one of the exceptions to a start is low, any low lacrosse stitch along, like, sorry, I'm doing it. There's no question. So anyways, that is that. The other plans I have for April are my Whipgo plans. Those um, numbers got pulled yesterday or the day before? No, Monday. They got pulled Monday. 
I don't even know what day it is. I'm realizing it is way, I think it's not the 25th or 26th. It's today must be the 28th at this point or 27th. Who knows? Anyways, point being, Whipco numbers got pulled. If you're not familiar with Whipco, Whipco is a whip game um, made by Jesse Marine Does Stuff here on FlossTube and on Instagram and on Facebook. There are Whipco accounts on Facebook and Instagram if you want to follow that. Um, and you make like a bingo board for your whips. And so um, this time, the one of the pieces that got pulled is Strawberry Harvest. And I have a very sad, sad start on this. And let me show it to you. I don't even know which way is up. And it doesn't really matter because I have decided I am restarting this. So that will be um, one of my goals and plans in April is to restart this. This is the called for. It's 40 Count Ancient by Picture This Plus. What I've discovered about myself, I don't like 40 Count Picture This Plus. It's not a joy to stitch on for me. Um, it's gorgeous. I love the color of this. It's great. It's the called for. I hate stitching on it. So what I've decided to do is I have this cut. This is a whip um, that I lost at one point, but I have found, and it's back on my whip list. This is the Raccoon by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, and this is a 36 count Picture This Plus Heritage. Um, there's another, I have plenty of room as you can see to do another cottage garden so I am going to restart this on that and I'm actually just going to start in the corner with the border um so that will be my goal my goal is to get to a thousand stitches on this next month and I think that'll be much easier on a 36 count picture of this plus rather than a 40 count for me personally. So that is one of my plans is a restart. I rarely restart things. I really try to like just keep going, but I can't keep going anymore, so. And then the other Whipco pool um, for next month is Rose Quaker. I'll pop a picture of what that looks like, but this is where I'm at. And my goal is to get a thousand stitches on this. So I will be working and I wanna finish this motif, finish this motif and then just kind of keep going in this direction. This is stitched on a 36 count Milk and Honey by Fiber on a Whim linen. And I'm doing my own color conversion with color and cottons on that. And then another goal for April <laughs> is to finish my Manning May whip from last year because I'm starting a new Carolyn Manning pattern for Manning made this year. Uh, my friends and I host a stitch along. Um, this year will be our second annual hashtag Manning May that we do. Um, stay tuned for more of that. We'll talk more about it in April. Um, there's going to be giveaways and maybe some things. I don't know. But I am stitching the April Tent Maker by Carolyn Manning and I just want to get this finished. It's only, I think, 61 by 61 stitches. I think I'm about 50% into this. Um, so I want to just get this done and completed so that I can get this off my whip list and start a new Carolyn Manning in the month of May. May 1st, probably. So very exciting. So that is my April plans. I think that's it as far as stitching goes. I think I've covered it all, which is a lot. But um, if you are interested in hearing about books, music, media, etc., keep watching. If not, I will see you next time. Um, I will probably see you guys in about two weeks for my next video. But if you want to stay, welcome. Here you go. We're going to keep talking. Um, let's uh, consult my notes. So <laughs> I haven't talked about books in so long. Um, I want to talk about one I just finished. This is called Bright Young Women. This is like one of my favorite books I've read this year so far. I know it's only March, but like this might be my number one book that I've read this year. I don't know. Um, this is a book that is kind of nonfiction-ish, but told in a fiction narrative way. Um, 
it is about it is from the perspective of the president of a sorority house a sorority um in florida in tallahassee during the time of ted bundy however what i loved about this book is that they never named him they just referred to him as the defendant and what i loved about this book because true crime can be meh, you know sometimes true crime can be what I loved about this book was that it really like highlighted the victims of this horrible horrendous crime and it connected it to another victim and kind of told more of her story and it was such a powerful story um and it was someone that he had murdered um earlier way before um the sorority house if you're familiar with the case the sorority house was pretty much his last hoorah so to speak, um, that sounds horrible, but it was his last massacre essentially that he committed before he was finally arrested. What I loved about this book was um, the main character, her sorority sister is murdered by the defendant and um, two of her sorority sisters are, and she witnessed him, she saw him, she saw his face and it is her, thinking about it years later and also going back in time and kind of uh, it's just it's so powerful and what I loved the most about it was I think true crime coverage it's really only ethical and good when you are highlighting spotlighting who the victim is their character the life that they led um talking about them in a respectful way, asking for their permission, working with the victim, working with the victim's families, um, and then talking about the defendant, the serial killer, the whoever, um, like you should be talking about them. They are not like mythical creatures. They are not um, super mega villains from a Disney film they are losers they're the scum of the earth losers and a line in this book that made me pause the book and just be like oh my god was the main the the, the sorority president said you know they thought the police and the the lawyers and the judges and the media fed into this narrative that the defendant was this just amazing, charismatic, charming, smart lawyer student, um, you know, that just, he had his whole life ahead of him. And, but then he just, you know, something went wrong and he happened to get into this track of life, right? And she, she says that they fed into that narrative because they, they continued to spread this myth because they're covering their own butts. They did horrible, shoddy police work. He escaped twice. He wasn't caught for all of these crimes. He, the police did not put in the work to get him caught. One of the only reasons he was caught is because of this character, this, this person, this witness that saw him at the sorority house. And they continued to build up this myth because they didn't want to admit that it was their fault, that he was not some genius he was only driven by ego he literally thought he was the smartest guy on earth just the best and that he deserved everything right and in reality he was just an incel who she caught picking his nose more than once in the courtroom and that was like <laughs> it was so it was such a powerful book i could talk about this forever and i'm gonna stop there but like please go check it out if you are again obviously trigger warning it talks about the defendant's crimes um it it's, doesn't go into like super gory detail by any means but it is um it's such a powerful book so if you are interested in that please go check it out um the next book that i want to talk about was the very secret society of irregular witches this is um a much more fun like <laughs> casual read it was such a cute little book um essentially there is this secret society of witches 
we follow the main character who's in her 30s and she has a YouTube channel and she talks about being a witch but she does it under the guise of like hey guys we're talking about witchy stuff but like low-key you know she doesn't expect anyone to believe that she's actually a witch but she it's her way of like being able to talk about being a witch without exposing that witches exist so she ends up um, getting reached out to by um, a group of people who watch over um they're in charge of these three girls and this all takes place over in the uk and the three girls are witches and um so she ends up going over and even though witches are not supposed to be together witches are supposed to be like alone um because like magic's too powerful when they get together she ends up going anyways and like essentially mentoring these girls it's um very cute it's like a romance um very light-hearted like english countryside type of book um it was a very easy read really cute and i very much enjoyed it so and then the other two books that i want to talk about um this was a series that i read back to back um the first one was house of salt and sorrow and the second one was house of root and ruin um I loved these books these were like dark magical whimsical a little spooky but not like horror by any mean it was just like kind of dark I don't know I don't know how to describe it it's like a dark whimsical it's a little fantasy because it kind of takes place um in a world where like there are kingdoms and things like that and like dukes and whatnot so it's kind of period piece drama mixed with a little bit of fantasy mixed with like a little bit of spookiness a little bit of magic which i love and so it was very cute um the first book follows a family um and there are a bunch of daughters and the daughters keep dying um and you kind of follow one of the the sisters and she is Fig trying to figure out like why her sisters are dying and what's going on and it's they live on like they live in a on an island and like it's very like sea you know themed like tentacles everywhere is like their emblem and all that so you end up it's a mystery so you like end up kind of following her and seeing what happened and what's happening and all of that and then the second book follows the youngest sister who you do meet in the first book and she ends up actually going off to a different kingdom um, because they want her to paint the portrait for their son. And this kingdom has like um, a lot of flowers. It's very floral, like botanical themed, um, hence the root and ruin part. And there's another mystery going on. Like the family's kind of weird. She's getting weird vibes, but she's also falling in love with the son a little bit um and so it was just really good I read them back to back um within a like a week or so they were super super good I really recommend them um if you're into something that sounds like that they're like not too intense they're not like dark fantasy romance or anything like that they're just like really whimsical spooky cute mystery romance books kind of um not heavy on the romance but just there's a little bit of dash of that in there so that's fun but yeah, those are all the books that I read. Um, I do want to talk about, I went to go see Love Lies Bleeding in theaters last weekend. It was good. If you are into A24 films, if you want to walk away from the theater thinking, what did I just watch? But in like a good way, go see it go see it go see it with a girlfriend um if you are of the gay variety I I really recommend going to see, going to see it it was very fun <laughs> I really liked it um it's got Kristen Stewart in it um uh Dave Franco and a bunch of other people that I can't think of right now but it's so good and I love the direction Kristen Stewart's going in like I just obviously I grew up on Twilight and things and so um it was just so fun seeing her like in this um character 
and the other woman the other lead in it I don't know her name but she, she did such a fantastic job I'm looking forward to seeing her in more things really really enjoyed the movie it was very fun the soundtrack was impeccable anyways so that that was good um other than that I've been watching I've been re-watching The Walking Dead with my partner um and it is I watched it when it first came out right like on tv like back in the day what was that 2011 I want to say it came out I was in high school still and I loved it and I watched it up until maybe season six or seven and then I stopped watching completely so we started from the beginning and we're watching it and we're getting to a point now where I'm like I don't remember any of this you know like I watched it so long ago and I've never done a rewatch of it um and it's been really fun to watch with my partner Connor like because he watched it too when it came out um so we've just been having a blast with that um but that's pretty much it as far as what I've been watching. There are things coming out that I can't wait for, um, including I did see the trailer for the Beetlejuice, the new Beetlejuice movie, and it, I cried because like Nightmare Before Christmas is like my number one movie of all time. And then Beetlejuice is like right there, like comfort movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, Beetlejuice, and a bunch of other stuff that I love. But I love Beetlejuice so much. I'm gonna cry so hard when I go to the theater I did the same thing with the Little Mermaid live action I ball because that was my favorite Disney film of all time when I was a kid um and I just cried the whole time because I loved it so much it was so good but yeah I have a Beetlejuice tattoo right there so like it's serious I'm very excited <laughs> um and then I want to talk about music so I think the last time I talked about music, I recommended Chapel Roan, which I totally said her name incorrectly. She is blowing up. Um, I love that for her. I have been still listening to her nonstop. Like I can't, I cannot stop listening to her. Um, but I saw that she just did an NPR Tiny Desk, which I always love and enjoy those um, from artists that I really like. So that was really awesome. But I also found another artist that I really enjoy her name is Lola Young I would recommend checking out the song Conceited really really good she's like got this like um she's from the UK very like I don't know if she's from London but it's very that like South um UK accent situation and it's poppy indie but like a little bit more on the rougher side like it's I don't know like I love the use of the bass in her music and like just like I don't know it just hits hard I really like it so I would recommend checking out Lola Young if you're into that type of music and then my favorite um band pretty much of all time I've seen them four times in concert I'm going to see them again in May of this year with my dad uh we're gonna head up to DC and go see them very excited the Decemberist um they're coming out with a new album in June but they released two singles and one of the singles I'm really enjoying because it reminds me of like the album that I found like my dad would play when I was a kid um one of their it's not their first album but one of their first albums was The Crane Wife and it has a super long song on it called The Crane Wife 1 and 2 and I love it um, and for this new album, they released a song called Joan in the Garden, and it is 18 minutes long. <laughs> Anyways, I love it. Um, if you like whimsical folk indie music, you would like The Decemberist. It's very, um, the lyrics are very narrative. Like it's very like English major. If you were, if you're into like that whole vibe, I love there's a review of them that I found a long time ago um someone did like a critic did a review of them and it was a poor review they were talking about how um only like pretentious English majors could like this band and I was like true okay <laughs> like but I really like them and I'm excited for this new album um they've been around for a long time since the early 2000s if you're familiar with them um then you'll probably know like the crane wife was probably their their most popular album um but yeah so i'm really excited for their new album i'm so excited to see them in may and take my dad and we're gonna have a good time 
we're gonna metro in and just like chill now that i'm old now that i'm 28 years old um concerts i do not like i'm not gonna stand in a line for a concert anymore like i'm done with that i'm not gonna try to get to the front if i can like cool but like also if i can just like go get a beer and like chill and not be pushed by people um i'll be fine and this is that this type of crowd they will not be pushing anybody like it's going to be mostly people anywhere from my age to in their 60s and 70s so it's like it's got a lot they have a a, a wide demographic i think age wise um i remember the first time i ever went was in 2009 I was a freshman in high school. My mom surprised me with tickets for my birthday on my birthday. And we went and at the time, again, this is 2009, it was like peak twee hipster time. And I remember like there's early 20 year olds like in line with us and I just like wanted to be them so bad. Um, and I don't know, I just think very fondly on those memories. And so um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing them in May, but. I think that's it. That's all the media I've consumed. That's all my stitching. I hope I didn't forget anything, but it's been a pleasure as always to talk to you all. I will see you in approximately two weeks with some more stitching, some more new starts, because who cares? Life is short and stitching is stitching and I don't need to limit myself, right? <laughs> Anyways, it's been awesome to talk to you guys. Love you all. Leave a comment, leave a like subscribe if you're not subscribed if you want to keep seeing me i'm here so anyways bye baby <laughs>